that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And that would usher in probably one of the most significant events of the 20th century. Under Reagan's leadership, eventually, the Berlin Wall would fall. Here's a great picture of that moment. You uh, look here on the left uh, of a Berliner, arms raised in the peace sign. This was a pretty significant event in 20th century foreign policy. Uh, we see a lot of actions by Reagan during this period in the 1980s, and then eventually his predecessor, um, George H.W. Bush, and that would be George W. Bush's father. There were trends of democracy happening all over Europe and South and Central America. Specifically, uh, we have a significant movement which would become part of uh, the extension of the war on drugs. Uh, a guy by the name of General Noriega, which had been backed or who had been backed by the CIA of basically uh, uh, keeping the one of the largest drug trades going through uh, the Panama Canal, would be removed from power. Um, but this was a, an example of what they started to refer to as Yankee imperialism. Uh, the same thing was going on in Nicaragua as well as in Colombia, where we were backing um, fairly strong dictatorships that were uh, more or less controlling the drug trade to keep the socialists or communists out of power. And this is basically what was happening at the end of the Cold War. America was winning. Now, were they winning in a way that was always democratic? Sure. Sometimes, if you look at Germany, um, if you look at Soviet Union with the growth of perestroika, uh, the uh, leadership under Gorbachev was changing. And uh, like Reagan says there, he uh, calls for them to tear down that wall. And the ideas eventually did tear down that wall. So uh, this was also extending into the Middle East, this fight against communism. And it was going in a different direction. The communists uh, the Soviet Union were trying to gain influence in the Middle East, specifically because of oil. Um, and George H.W. Bush, as well as Reagan, uh, were starting to get involved in these areas. Um, in Iran, obviously, we learned about Carter's involvement with the Iran hostage crisis. Um, that country still would be part of our history. Uh, we learned of a bit of a, uh, a conspiracy, uh, which was called the Iran-Contra affair, where essentially uh, we were dealing arms to people to fight against the, um, the uh, Contra rebels in um, Colombia and then also dealing with Iran and paying money to try to overthrow the Ayatollah. In Iraq, there's an interesting situation where if you notice the guy uh, here on the right, uh, Mr. Saddam Hussein, uh, we on the left, Donald Rumsfeld, who eventually would uh, rise up to uh, uh, one of the higher staff people, George W. Bush, uh, we made Saddam Hussein be powerful. Uh, we basically created Iraq so that we would have somebody to fight against Iran. And this was all part of that uh, move to end the Cold War. Lastly, we look at Africa. Um, George H.W. Bush uh, moved to end something called apartheid, uh, which was basically a, a similar situation as what we had in the uh, American South. In Africa, there was a South Africa, there was a separate um, move to have separation of the races called apartheid. Um, Nelson Mandela, if you see in the upper right hand corner there, was released from prison and uh, eventually elected president. And also we start to see a growth of American involvement in Africa, um, par particularly in mostly Muslim states uh, like Somalia, uh, where we started Operation Restore Hope, which eventually 
under the leadership of George uh, Bill Clinton, we would see uh, you know what is immortalized in Black Hawk Down, uh, the downing of an American uh, helicopter in uh, Mogadishu, which created a huge kind of um, negative reaction to what was basically us trying to gain influence in Africa. Um, in Asia, a lot of what we're still dealing with, which Nixon started in the 70s, was dealing with China. Uh, we see the Chinese government changing a little bit in the Tiananmen Square uh, riots, which you can see in the bottom left-hand corner where a young uh, students were basically standing up against the communist regime. Uh, this created kind of a different move uh, in our relationship with China. We definitely uh, looked down on their human rights violations, but also continued our economic uh, connection with them. So these are some of the big elements from 20th century foreign policy. However, the one that we really want to focus on is immortalized in Germany and particularly the fall of the Berlin Wall. This became a symbolic move of how we won the Cold War.